and welcome to the NBS show, episode number 344. I am your host, Norman Sanzo. Joining me today is Starstream. Hello, everybody! <laughs> How are you doing, man? Great. <laughs> you sound happy? Yeah, happy and tired at the same time because it's been a great week and it's also one of the more, more tiring week, I could say. Oh my, well, what happened? Well, last week I went to a convention in KL. It's lasted for like uh, Saturday and Sunday, but the thing is because my workplace didn't want to give me a leave, so in the end I just planned my trip to be like Friday evening after work, drive all the way down to uh, Miri, Malaysia. Just to take a flight all the way to Kuala Lumpur, and then uh, Sunday night after the con's over, then I just fly back. Oh wow! Like just day trip, really? Yep, just a no leave club trick. <laughs> oh my goodness, that's gonna be it's one heck of a and... fun one. <laughs> oh, wow, like really, no no break, just back to back. Yeah, just back to back. <laughs> oh man, that 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 no, that that sounds like tiring, man. Yep, that sounds very tiring. I did came back and I was like half broken. <laughs> but I dare say, I have a lot of fun. That's what I could dare say. That we'll just talk about later on, which this episode we'll be talking a bit, bit about after the pony news. We'll be talking about the retrospective of my experience going to the convention. All right, <laughs> yeah, all right. Then. So anyway, let's head into the news. So, first up, Hasbro teams up with Toys for Thought to match donations up to $1 million. So, we're almost, what, uh, 15, uh, what, 20 days till Christmas, was it? Or 10 days till Christmas? Uh, That's another, well, 10 days. Yep. So, on the recording day, another 10 days till Christmas. So, yes. Yep. So, it's the season to be jolly. It's the season to be gift-giving and whatnot. And mm-hmm. it seems that, well, Hasbro are going to do so because they are going to be donating up to $1 million worth in toys so that this will be distributed to the children in the States. Yay! Much much fun. Yay! What do you know of this, man? Toys for Toss. I remember that it's not just Hasbro that did this before. I remember, I think it was Bill Bear did it before. Yeah, I, I mean, could be wrong. Bill Bear still there, man. Like, um, I know. I'm looking at the uh, website for Toys for Toss or dot org, and mm-hmm. um, there are some uh, sponsor corporations that are doing this. Um, oh. Bill Bear, Delta, Freeway, Freeway Insurance, Funko, Hallmark, Hasbro, HESS. Uh, J. Walter Thompson, Atlanta, Kmart, The Walt Disney Company, and so on. Like, there is a lot of uh, companies that are involved. And, <laughs> you know, I- I'm not going to be cynical about it, but I'm just going to say that this is really fun. This is really good for the kids. And, yeah, th- this is all around fun. It's, it's kind of like this, the kind of deal where Santa brings toys to the kids kind of kind of situation, I guess. You could say that. You could say that. That's one way to look at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, <coughs> like, this is like... Oh, it could be for the marine kids. Wait, I don't know. Wait. How does this work? It says America less fortunate children. So does that mean those who are below below a poverty line? Is it... That, yeah, I, it I think so. Yeah, I think so. Under the poverty line, that will be, that will be logical. Uh, mm-hmm. Under the poverty line and also probably um, foster homes or orphanages and whatnot. That sounds right. Or it could be for those like, uh, what do you call it? Those that, uh, who went for marine? Like, I mean, for the father went for, uh, like, what do you call it? Outstation and then never came back that kind of situation? Uh, I don't know. It could like, be. I know you're just looking at pictures on the Toys for Tots website, but I don't know. No, I'm just looking at the the name. It says Marine Toy for Toys for Tots. I was like, huh? I was like, why? Who knows, right? Yep. But anywho, that's good news. So yeah, be jolly. Be in a charitable mood if if you are able to. So yes. Mm. So anywho, let's move on to the next news. And the next news is a bit interesting because well, Hasbro announced new indoor water park and resort project. So we all know that there's theme parks all over the world uh, like in my neck of the wood there's Legoland and in 
Singapore, there's Universal Studios, and so on. And it seems that Hasbro is going to be having its own thing soon. So that's going to be cool and great. But um, I think this is related to the China one, remember? Yeah, I remember. Was it something about the hotel? Yeah, something like that. Um, the Pony Hotel that's going to be in China. And then I think we were talking about this. Yeah, I think we were talking about Team Hotel and whatnot. Yeah, and yeah, it seems be- that this is one of those things. Because I remember something about the Monopoly Hotel. Was it Monopoly Hotel in KL? There's, they're going to plan? Yeah, they, they did mention that. It's kind of interesting. So, uh, wow. So, they now have an indoor water park and resort project. So, uh, I guess this is the one that we were talking about, the hotel. and But now it's like it's showing up as a proper one, which is an indoor water park and a resort. Because resort is a hotel. True, true. And it looks like that... Um, all of Hasbro's brand will be in attendance for this, from ponies to Magic the Gathering to Nerf. So this will be interesting. Like, um, we'll see how it goes because theme parks usually are expensive and are hard to go, especially in this one in a situation like this in China. If mm. it is in China, but uh, I'm not hundred percent sure this one. But then again, if it's it's a good strategy to open in China because the fact that China is a... They have a lot of a uh, population and then if you count a certain like amount of people, right, it's going to be confirming that they're going to get like at least a lot of profit like like daily anyway. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm redacting what I just said because uh, <laughs> it's not only China. I, I think the, the hotel is in China. This one is something else. Like this one could be in the States. Hmm. It could be possible. Yeah, well, I'm not 100% sure where it's going to be based at. Mm. But like you mentioned before, uh, it's all going to be um, Hasbro-based branding. Like um, I'm looking at the, what you call this, license dot, uh, licenseglobal.com. Mm. And it says that um, including brands from My Little Pony, Nerf, Monopoly, Mr. Potato Head, Candyland, Hungry, Hungry Hippos, Magic the Gathering, and many more. So yeah, um, a hotel or a resort that um, deals with those kind of brandings, it'll be interesting, it'll be interesting. Could you just imagine uh, the water toys, you'll have Nerf guns that, could, that shoot water and whatnot, like, that'll be cool. Yeah, I mean, I've seen those before, the Nerf uh, water types one. Yeah, but this one you can use it for free at the park and it's cheaper and stuff. Or those Magic the Gathering towels that you can towel off. <laughs> I know someone who would be interested. I'm I'm looking at and I'm looking at that person. <laughs> yep, yep. And probably what? Uh you'll have the ponies. So we'll see, it'll, it'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. Like we'll see where they are going to uh put this resort in. As for now, uh the location hasn't been announced yet, so we'll have to wait and see. We'll have to wait and see. Mm-hmm. So last up on the news is well <laughs> kind of a Funny one because uh, Australia ABC runs a pony segment on Heart Quiz, and this video here is on the Facebooks, and I've seen it, and oh my goodness, this this is hard. This this is really hard. For those attendees who never seen it, I guess it would be hard. But for those who knows it well, then it would be quite easy, I guess. Have you seen it? I haven't watched it yet. <laughs> oh. I was going to watch it, but I was like, it's like. I think I saw this on when I was working or something. So I didn't like really like look through the whole video. Yeah, this was on the Facebooks a while back now. And I've seen it and oh my goodness, it's not just Gen 4. It covers a lot of Gen 1. So there are some things that are like for us who don't really know the previous ponies have a hard time uh, answering. But this one, oh my goodness, the questions are something like, who, who who, has a cutie mark of an ice cream cone thingy? Like, what, who, uh, or uh, who, who was the name for the stuff and so on? Like, if you're, if they're doing uh, Gen 1, it's like, oh my goodness, I got no idea. But if you're talking about Gen 4, oh yeah, it's, uh, I'm an expert on Gen 4. Like, ha, 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 I think they purposely does do it like Gen 1 question. So it's like, huh. Of, obviously, people know Gen 4, but no one's, n- not many know Gen 1. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's interesting. But no, nah, I mean, it's, it's really fun. It's really fun. Like, if you have the time, 
go watch it, go check it out and see how it is because this is a fun quiz. Like, it, it will question your knowledge. Like, yeah. But hey, that's the news. And so let's head on to the next topic. And well, you wanted to talk about this one. So go ahead, man. Yeah, so uh, this is what you call it. This is a short retrospective from my point because the convention that I went to is actually a furry convention and uh, happened in Malaysia on the 8th and 9th of September, uh, December. I nearly want to say September. <laughs> <laughs> like I said before, uh, it's, it's kind of interesting to have taken the trip like I didn't, like, what you call it, take any leave because they didn't allow me to take leaves because I'm still in probation and whatnot. So in the end, I'll just be like, you know what, screw it. I'm not going to tell anyone. I'm just going to be like, hey, after work, I'm going to head all the way down to Miri and then I'm just going to take a flight and then just came back on the Sunday night. That is pretty nuts, man. Like, the that, like, how do you put this? Like, it's on the weekend, so wait, you went back on the Sunday itself? Yeah, well, like Sunday night, basically. Oh my goodness, aren't you tired? Like, oi. I was. Like I said, it was like a very surreal experience. It'd be like, I did not get enough sleep. <laughs> and the thing is, both the time I went, I went f- like heading out from, um, what do you call it? From Miri, uh, driving to the Miri airport. And then coming back from the Miri, uh, from KL. Both both times it's like it's raining. And it's not just normal rain, it's thunderstorm. Yeah, it's like heavy rain be like, oh boy. I'm just gonna be like I was so I, I still remember my experience though. I because I was like when I was like driving after work, I was like, Oh That's not a word. It looks like it's gonna rain and it's like it's not stopping. I was like, God dang it. I was like my flight was around like seven fifteen PM and by the time I was I because I have a luggage with me, I so I need to check in. So I need to reach there. Before like what six fifteen or something? Yeah, something like that. Like um, it should be uh half an hour. Or, no, it should be two hours earlier. But eh. No, because this is a domestic flight, so it's like I uh, at least a minimum of like forty five minutes before, and then they will close the baggage check in. So I was like, I rushed there, and by the time I reached there, I was like, that's not a word. My time is like over and whatnot because no one was helping me. So I drive my car and park at the hotel, like which was like in front of the uh, what you call the airport. So after that, from there, I just went to the airport. I was going to okay. I was like check in my luggage. I was like, oh good, thank goodness, I'm in time. Check in my luggage, and then the what you call the attendant. They told me, ah oh, sir, your flight has been delayed for one hour. Okay, a lot of time to rest up. I was like, oh boy. I was like, I reached there was like six some like I was already like six thirty. I was like. I'm gonna, I thought I was like, I'm gonna be late for checking my luggage and whatnot. Your flight has been delayed for one hour. Oh. By the time I was like flying out, I was like about eight plus flying out. And then truly flying out from KL, like start journey, I think it was like maybe about 9 p.m. out. So by the time I reached like KL, it was already like around 11, 11.30? No, wait, was it 11.30 or something like that? Around that. So... I had to like contact like Charlie and uh Daniel. Uh-huh. Same thinky. To uh it was like guys, uh someone need to pick me up from the airport. <laughs> and not not from like like uh someone had to pick me up because uh, I was trying to make it to the train, but in the end I couldn't make it to the train. Because the last train that has leave the what do you call it? The KL Central, which is the hub, like twelve oh seven. By the time I reached like the KL Central it was already like twelve fifteen. Oh man, that, that's not fun. It was not fun because I was like rushing and I was like, no, I couldn't make it. I was like, oh, you know what? Never mind. I'm just gonna be like, I'm just gonna take a KL Express and take like the trip from the KL IA2 airport all the way to K- uh, KL Central and just gonna ask someone to pick me up. So in the end, Charlie picked me up from the uh, KL Central and just dropped me off at the Pinnacle apartment because that's where we stay, which is like, Five minute walk to the Armada, the Hotel Armada, where the con is being held. And then I was like, I couldn't sleep and whatnot. By the time I went to sleep, it was like already like around 3 a.m. in the morning. Oh, wow. That is a lot of um, stress on you. But still, uh, you managed to arrive. You managed to be there. So how was it? Right? Like, how was the con? How was the con itself? The con? I, my last experience was that I did not know many people. 
But this year was like a lot of diff. Uh, it was quite different because I joined the Telegram group, which is where all the furries are, and uh, I start to chat, chat up with them, and then we all have like, that was like last year, kind of deal, and from there I was like, hey, I get to know people and whatnot, like online handle that is, so meeting them in real life is like, oh wow, I was like. Uh, it's so nice to fi- officially meet you guys. I was like shaking hands and whatnot, and obviously, like some of the the art that like people drawn, I, I commissioned them. They are furries. I mean, like the the one who made my batch that you saw, Norman. That is like one of the furry guy who did it, and then also the art, which I think I didn't mention. I think I shown you the what you call it, the garden one. That one was also drawn by a furry. All right, <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. Yeah. So and then I was like, I go to the convention. I just paid the person. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right that, that's still cool yeah it's uh, dare I say though I, I've been having a lot of fun at like this <laughs> all right all right right so what else man like um you've been there you've been uh doing a lot of stuff like um according to the schedule it, they started opening doors at 10 yep they started opening at 10 so I registered and whatnot I actually, in some sense, that because I was so... In this convention, I did not attend much of the panel. What I did was I just walked around, like, just saying hi to people. Like, just just saying, like, uh, saying hi, see some of the people. Like, people that I met last year, I was just like, can I uh, either take a picture of you with you? Or second thing is, like, can I hug you? That kind of situation. So it was kind of fun. All right. The con sounds like fun, like any other normal con, except it's for the team. Yeah. It, you could say it's like team I mean like yeah because like I said some bronies were there so it's not that bad <laughs> alright 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 uh, like I said I wish I could join but I didn't have the cash to go like no money for uh, the lodging and transport and food most of my money went from last year's con oh sorry not last year's like last month's convention um, the Friendship Express, so yeah, didn't have like, any extra cash, so I'm I'm quite of you know tight budget. <laughs> yeah, because the thing is that I'm actually still owing. I think I owe Dan the accommodation money because I haven't even paid him. <laughs> oh, oh, oh wow, okay. Still, like I mentioned before, it's um we went well, actually not we but you went to two cons, I went to two cons, but your con experience have what? Uh, no, not not really. It's interesting because uh, my con was in October and November. Yours is in November and December. Sam? So, yeah. how do I put this? Yeah, the the gap between us is considered the same. But mm-hmm. I think it's just that, like, for you, it's the location? Pretty much, yes. You got it right. But, and also, why I, did, I also did mention this before the podcast. I actually went to this con cash. Like, very low in cash <laughs> mm. because of uh, because of the reason why I went for low in cash was because of the fact that well congratulations my car insurance has just finished so I need to pay for my road tax and insurance oh yeah like the timing was terrible then <laughs> the timing was damn terrible I was like god dang it I had to pay for that and next thing I know I was like I came back home I found out that my house has no power so next thing I know I go check the power meter check Oh, the power has, uh, what do you call it? The meter has ran out. I need to go out and buy a prepaid card just to charge up my house. Oh, wait. You're like the Brits then. That you need to buy power first. Yeah, we had to buy power. I was like, oh. I was like, I was like cringing. I was like, my money, God's sake. And wait, then I was wait, like, yeah. if I'm not mistaken, you're staying with your parents, right? Yeah, I'm staying with my parents. So where are they? Well, the thing is, my mom is like not working. And then I was like, oh, you know what? That kind of situation. And second, my brother is not at home. Yeah, I mean, like, after that's done, you could always ask for the money back, right? I was like, you know what? Not gonna happen. <laughs> okay. I was like, uh, never mind then. That kind of situation. All right, all right, all right. I mean, um, that's interesting. Like, this is the first time I'm hearing that Brunei has a prepaid system in terms of how they get power. So, that's interesting. Well, the thing is that it was used used to be running on meter, but the thing is, obviously, you know how certain people not pay the money and uh, they accumulate too much. And next thing you know, it's like, hmm, you know what? Let's just implement this. Oh, 
Okay, I mean, that, that's interesting. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the Brits, they do the token thing where you buy a token, you slot it into the um, box kind of thing. I, I don't know. Like, I'm Ours? not 100% sure. Ours is more like a top-up system. Yeah. We just like buy a scratch card or like you can just go to the, what do you call it? Yeah, the utility, uh, the el- the electrical utility or something. Uh, mm-hmm. And then you just buy the power and they just give you like a receipt and you just top up <laughs> your uh, meter. Yeah, yeah. Still, so, man. That's, that's interesting. That's interesting. But, you know, um, I think that's a conversation for another day. So you didn't buy anything in firm then? In some sense, not really. I did not buy much of uh, I did not buy anything. And uh, w- one interesting thing about this con is like, uh, like, well, like I said, I did not manage to do a lot of panel. I mean, so one of the panel that I wanted to join was Clash with the C Ponycon panel. So <laughs> I couldn't, I, so I was like, oh, God dang it, I want to attend it. But in the end, I had to like, chair, I had to help Dan with the panel. So I just helped him. <laughs> so you still had to help Dan. You know what happened? Because second day, is, well, I did a lot more because supposedly I did say I want to stay back, but they had a first suit walk. So in the end, you know what? I just go for the first suit walk instead. So that was fun. All right. I mean, as long as you have fun, man. Like yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm I'm guessing, and by the pictures, I also noticed that you met a lot of the Sea Pony guys, like Daniel, Anthony, uh, Charlie. And yeah, and some of the what you call friends. the pre- yeah. yeah, and some of the previous members. From what I heard from Dan and uh, Charlie, it was the previous members of like the MBH, uh, the group. Mm-hmm. So it was like, the, but the thing is, they went like, what do you call it, silent, or they kind of deal. They like they left the fandom as in some in some ways, one way or another, and uh, just move on that kind of situation. Mm-hmm. And they were like very surprised. I was like, where the heck have you been? It's like we have like no longer getting like no longer in contact with one another. And it's like, where have you been? <laughs> they were like so surprised, and it was kind of interesting. Yeah, yeah, but still, it's one of those cases, man. Like the. How to put this? The, the furry fandom or the brony fandom, like, it's it's all encompassed, man. Like, you're a fan of one, you gotta be a fan of the other. Like, no matter how much you deny it, you're still one and the other. Yeah, that is true. At the dealer's den, which is what we call it the merchant hall, one of the vendors that I met last year came back again. Uh, one of the uh, Filipino ah. fur. Right. And, but the thing is that, like I said, I I'm, I don't think I mentioned this before, but last year, right, I talked with this girl, which is the Fili- the Filipino fur. And mm-hmm. the thing is that she told me that she's actually a brony. But what makes it interesting was that she does not know the community in Philippines. So in the end, I was like, I talked to her about it and just say that uh, I have some people that I might introduce you to. So fast forward one year, I managed to like ask Daniel to help with the introduction to the to the group. Uh-huh. So it gets interesting. Alright, then how did it went? Like, did she uh, met up with a lot of people and stuff, or what? It just met up with Dan, and Dan explained that uh, about the Filipino, the brony group and whatnot, and we just show her that about our mas- our country mascots, and all these kind of things. Uh-huh. So it, it gets quite interesting. Alright, alright. And did you get to meet up with uh, Christel? Crystal? Crystal, yes. Yeah. Yes, I, m- I met up with her. I mean, she she stayed in the hotel instead. Only for like Saturday night because Sunday night they just like drive back to uh, where she where she live. Yeah. They just like go she's back what, to where she lives. Yeah. Kale, right? Yeah, she live in uh, actually Koh Seremban. Oh, not that, well, not that far, I guess? It's one hour dr- from where Charlie is. Yeah, so... No, it's, it's quite far. It's quite far. It's uh, like one hour, one hour plus journey. All right, all right, right. You could say. I mean, like, from the airport to her place, it was about one hour plus. All right, still not that bad. Still not that bad. So it's like a lot of fun, man. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. But what the thing is, why I said I, I missed out one of the panel was, like I said, I had to chair for the... Uh, I had to help with the Path to Sea Ponycon. But at the same time, there was a panel called Soft Drink Appreciation Panel. Huh. Okay. What makes it fun? The... I don't think you see in the picture. There is actually a picture of like, I think it was like ten different soft drinks uh-huh. that this guy, this one for import like from USA, and one of and two of the drink will get you interested. What? And you'll be like, how the heck you even get in the first place? And I think uh, it's the Crystal Pepsi. Mm, 
not really. I... <laughs> okay, okay, it's not that much. I mean, well, for me, it's, like, it's kind of like, ooh, that's interesting. And then they had like some other ones like the Mexican Pepsi or something? Coke. Or Mexican Cola. Yeah, Mexican Cola. And then some of them is like 18 something, like the older classic like the original, what do you call it? The Coca-Cola recipe. And then those are uh, quite interesting. But one of the final one is actually quite interesting. But the thing is, I could not manage to test it. And I was quite salty. Oh, that's not fun. Yep. It's what they call Nuka Cola Quantum. What's that? Does it have something to do with Fallout 74? It's, it's, yeah, it's someone make a vault, like Fallout drink, and then they bring it to real life. And, uh, it's a soft drink. Oh, it's okay. a Nuka Cola Quantum. And I was like, I kind of want to test it. I was like, I couldn't test it. I was like, God dang it. But the thing is, it's quite nice is that because that drink is blue, right? Someone put a light on it mm-hmm. and it's actually like glow, glow in like gl- glow very nicely. I was like, God dang it. I really want to try it, but I couldn't. Maybe you get a chance next year if they come along again. Hopefully it's not clashing with some panel again. Yeah, I hope that you get a chance to do it again. Yep. What else? Uh oh, uh this year team is magic. So one of the one of the fur decided to do uh what you call it? Uh tarot reading. Fortune oh. read read. Yeah, so uh, it's not really a fortune telling kind of thing, it's more like a healing read because it's doing the rainbow healing card read. So this is a bit different. Huh, okay, okay. So I got my tarot read and um from there I was I uh, nearly missed my Luggish drop in. Oh. Oh, because, I, okay, because the guy was so busy and then I only could do it like during the closing ceremony. So, in, and we did a fast one. So it was like, by the time I was like, because at the time closing ceremony was happening and they had like lucky draw and whatnot. So yeah, lucky draw. And then they, after that, they announced the next year panel and next year team of team for forum. Oh, so what's next year's team then? Well, they say all teams come, uh, all good things come to an end. The next year team is, uh, Robocalypse. <laughs> oh, ho. so wait, is next year's going to be the last? No, it's actually just the, they say all good teams come to an end. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> because last year was school, this year is magic, next year is like, the, like, the whole world ends, so it's like, Robo Apocalypse! So it's like, people are like, they already planning is like, oh, you know what? People is gonna be like dressed up as like Neo Automata and those kind of shenanigans. Okay. Terminator and be like, hmm, this looks kinda interesting. That, that is gonna be cool. That's gonna be cool, man. Like, I, I'm looking here and yeah, the Siponicon guys also got, uh, their con there. Like, you were helping them out, right? So, how, how was their, uh, panel? A lot of people? Just few, bunch, handful? It was, it was like at least about 10 plus people. Alright, um, cool. ma- not that many, but it was at least they, they attended and they were like, some of them was like, the one that I was talking about, the bronies. So they just like curious and they just wanna sit around and just hear about it. Uh, alright, alright, alright. And, uh, what else? Someone actually bring an arcade machine? Oh, they brought a cab? Really now? Yeah, they brought a cab. It's a mini one. It's the, the tabletop one. Uh. It's like, uh, it's running on, you know, what emulator? The- <laughs> Ah, I forgot. I, I think I, it's, I, it's, it's the one that comes with the controller. Is that one? I, I can't remember. It's, um, it's, um, MAME? Yeah, it was MAME, I think. And then I see people play like Metal Slug, and then I think I've seen people play Street Fighters. Because there was like over 300 games that were like in, in the, in the cab and it was whatnot. It was like kind of interesting. Yeah. So, uh, it seems like fun. Like, um, probably, if I have the cash for next year, I'll probably go and see how it goes because it seems like a lot of fun. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. I mean, like, if you know the people, then it it gets more fun. Like, but the thing is, you get to see all those nice fursuits for once. Oh yeah, I noticed on the pictures or in the pictures, there are a lot of really awesome fursuiters, man. Yeah, like oh my goodness, it's words are beyond me. Like. They, they are awesome. They are awesome. And some of them is like quite popular in some sense. Yeah, if you're in the community, <laughs> if you know that. Yeah, yeah, it like, yeah, it was like, oh, wow. I was like, oh, wow. And, and the thing is that this year has a lot of first time attendees. So it gets quite interesting. And we did know the number of how many attendees compared to last year and this year. Oh, okay. How many people this year? Last year was 197, mm-hmm. and this year was 280 plus. Ooh, not bad. 
and the thing is that from the f- past like year, like that three years, three mm-hmm. years, uh, 2015, mm-hmm. like 2015, 2016, 17, 18, this, I think their fourth year. Yes, the fourth year. Basically, that you get like something of a times two kind of a, like attendees <laughs> means that more and more people that gr- keep on like growing and growing. So that, that is feel. awesome. That is awesome. More people come along. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That sounds good. Still, that, that sounds awesome and it's good for them that they're building up the furry community in Malaysia. So that's awesome on them. And yep. it seems that the community for them is uh, growing and having a positive output in the community. So much awesomeness. Yes, it's much awesomeness. I, I mean, I did have a lot of fun. I mean, like seeing like people and whatnot. That's supposed to be the way, man. Like, uh, go there, have fun, and be mindful of each other. So, yeah, that, that's awesome. <coughs> and but the the fun thing is that apparently, because of the first suit walk, right, it did get onto the Reddit, <laughs> the Malaysia Reddit. Oh, Malaysia for Reddit. Yeah, Malaysia subreddit. Uh huh. All right, that's cool. So it it was like, oh wow, it's like, I'm quite surprised. That's all I could say. <laughs> all right, all right. All right. So anyway, uh, is there anything more? So let's talk about my uh, return trip. Alright. Okay, my return trip was quite interesting. So after like, by the time I think the con finished, it was like around 6.15. Alright. And my luggage drop off is like 7.15pm. Oh no, okay. So what happened was like, I was saying that I was in panic mode. So gg.com. So in the end, I was like, you know what? I was right rushing to the train station. I was like, that's not a word. I, I was going to take like the train and whatnot. It's like faster. I was like, you know what? In the end, I just like, screw it. I was like, I took take a grab because I was using grab share. Mm-hmm. You know, the grab, the speed one. Mm-hmm. So it's like, it's faster. All right. Somehow. So and then it was like, you know what? Screw it. I just take grab. By the time I reached the airport, it was around like 7.30. I was like, no, I don't think I could check in anymore. Went to the counter check-in. And then, no, I looked at the time, I was like, okay. And then I went to the counter check-in, I was like, it was, for some reason, it was delayed. <laughs> it was delayed by 20 minutes. Were you flying Asia? Yeah, I was flying Asia. That's your answer. I was, I know, but it was like, 8.15. Uh, delayed until like 8.45. <laughs> okay. So, okay, I was like, Put in my luggage. I was like, can I still check in? My my luggage. I was like, yes, you can still check in. Do you? I was like, your flight. And he told me your flight has been delayed. I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh, at least I could check in my luggage. But the thing is that sad thing was, uh, by the time I reached back to, uh, I was like, okay, everything was fine. Went on to the plane. I was so damn tired, man. It was like because I, like for the two days I was actually sleep at like three a.m. in the morning. Oh, okay. By the time I reached back to Miri, it was like around like eleven. I did not expect there was a quite delay and whatnot, but because of the delay reach, it was like around like 11, 15, 30, around like that. Uh, I know, 11, 15, like that, around that, yeah, by the time. So in the end, I'll be like, I go grab my car, walk in the rain, walk in the rain, grab my car, and then try to drive back to the border. Next thing I know, the border was closed. Huh? What? Because I was trying to rush to the border, because I was in Br- the, 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 what do you call it, the check. The checkpoint closes at 12 a.m. in the morning. What? It's not 24 yep. hours? Nope, it's not 24 hours. Oh. If it was 24 hours, I, w- I, won't, I won't be that rushing. In the end, I had to book a one night, uh, one night hotel. Oh, man. Did you manage to go back to work on time? Yeah, I, I actually did manage to, like, went to work on time. Surprising me. And then like, I was like, I just went back to sleep. But the thing is, went back to work, I'd be like... Zombie mode. <laughs> Complete zombie mode, man. I was like so damn tired because I only have like what? I reached the hotel was like around 1 a.m. plus. By the time I prepped everything was like 2, 2 a.m. plus that I went to sleep. Wow, okay. At least you get to be back home and stuff and work is normal, so that's good. One fun thing. Monday morning, went to work. After that, went back home. Like, you know what happened? No power. No. I drive all the way to Banda just to meet a fur. <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> so, in the end, I, I'd be like, I came back, I was like driving back from Banda. I was like, boy, I was like a zombie, man. I was like so, I was like falling asleep nearly for, because I was like driving. And no one was like my guide or anything. So, no, no wingman, no nothing. So well, like, you know what you have done, right? 
I know I should have taken a rest on the road. I was like, no, no, no. Screw no, it. I was no, like, no, no. You, you should have listened to the MBS show while on the road. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good one. <laughs> no, but the thing is, the new episode wasn't even out. That, that it was uh, like listen, Monday morning. Listen to the review, review and discussion podcast available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I could have done that. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll say, it was a great experience. I mean, like, the reason why I did this ex- experiment was the fact that partly because I bought the ticket. You know how early I bought the ticket? Uh, I think they need to pre reg early. So, um, it, how, I how... bought the ticket back when it was announced. Oh. No, man. when it released to the public, I was number 46. Ooh, wow. That is. Wow, wow, okay. Yeah, and by the time from what I hear, the, there was a num- highest number that caught was about 300 plus. Ooh, alright. Yeah, because the thing is, the, the ticket is a running number. So, those who get 001, yeah. Well, be, be, and you're not going to get ones. 001. That's, um... No, 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 no. I'm a Singaporean actually got it. Really time. now? Yeah, because last year was, uh, last year was quite interesting. Last year was actually someone local got it. Not not here. I mean, someone from Miri got oh. the ticket number 001. And the lucky draw some pulled out 001. <laughs> oh, wow. That's, that's awesome. I was like, holy hell, man. I was like, whoa, damn. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Oh, man. That, sounds, that, just, that just sounds awesome. Yeah. But I did want to say, though, I want to shout out to one guy. I won't say the name, but he is that guy. He's the first guy that I took a photo with last year. And because of that one photo, I managed to find a, a what do you call it, a, a group of Bonio first. So we actually, I actually went to this furry convention just to try to take photos with all the Bonio first. Because let's just say that we got uh, people from all the way from Sabah, all the way to Kuching. Like, all went there. And it's not just that, it's including Lab One. Oh, wow. That's awesome. That's awesome. <laughs> so it's like... So it's like, you can just say it's the one whole big family just went to the con. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh. And it's not just, and it's not just one, and it's not just me that represent both Brunei and Miri. There's actually someone from Miri also attended. Ooh. So it's like two Miri first, and I think it was like five or six Kuching first. Wow. And then there was like, uh, like at least like five or six like KK first, Saba first. Oh, wow. Okay, okay, okay. So that, that's just awesome. That's just awesome. It was like, yeah, it's a big family. <laughs> Yeah, that sounds awesome. That makes me want to plan for next year. Like, make me want to try go for next year's. And the thing is that there's actually a few Johor first. I, in, I know. In the con, in the con uh, I yeah. Know some, I know some. Like, uh, I won't name them because I'm sure they don't want to be named. But yeah, I know yeah, yeah. two of them that went and others and that. Like, I got no idea. Maybe you, what you could do is that you could just like ask for carpooling or whatnot. You, you could do that. We'll, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. That's for next year's thing. Mm. <laughs> and next, and of course, prepare your magic. <laughs> I don't know if they're gonna have a Magic the Gathering uh, game panel next year, but who knows, right? You mean, you can just bring anything, like board games or whatnot, just play at the con hall. There's nothing wrong. I mean, people bring Switch, just play at the con. True, 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 true. We will see, we'll see. It's one of those things where if you're at a con, you want to be roaming around, not sitting down and playing card games and stuff. Like, they dedicated a slot for Magic, so that was fun. Like, I do hope that they do it for next year, so yes. But eh, we'll see, we'll see. So anyway, if you have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at dmbsshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at show, and my personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Star, where can the good people find you? People could find me on my DeviantArt, AngelicorXX, or my Twitter account, AngelicorXX, also. Nice, nice. And also, please subscribe and rate us on iTunes, YouTube. Don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. And stitch your radio, and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PoneyVLive.com. Links are in the show notes. Also, do subscribe to review and discussion podcast on iTunes and stitch your radio. Over there, you'll catch me, Silver Quill, and also Silver Heart Song. Review the Pony episodes, comics, movies, and, well, many more. And if you'd like to support the show, you can do so at patreon.com slash the MBS show. With every support, you'll get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast, exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about thank yous, I'd like to thank Mr. Flag, Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. You're great. 
So anyway, I have been Norman Sunzo. And this is Starstream. And we'll guys catch you next time with another fun episode of the Media Show. See ya. See ya, everypony. Pony.